Thank you for taking the time to watch our Author Toolkit video. A question you have probably asked yourself in your life is, what is publishing? Okay, maybe not, but we're here to explain to you in this short video all the things that you need to know about the publishing industry. We hope that we'll be able to clarify some common misconceptions surrounding the industry and give you some generally helpful advice. So to start off, what exactly is a publisher and what do all their various titles mean? We're going to play a little who's who of publishing. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to Nancy, the literary agent. Hi there, I'm Nancy. Once I've taken you on as an author, my job is to find a publisher for you. Primarily, I will place your work with the right publisher, fuel competition between them, and negotiate for you to secure the best terms and check your royalty statements. I'll ultimately help manage the distribution of your rights to the publisher. I might even help you with film and television rights, but remember, we agents earn our money through commissions, and this will be taken from your advance and royalties before it's given to you. Now, within a publishing house, there are varying people that do lots of different jobs to help make your book the best. So to start off, I'd like to introduce you to the editorial team. There are a range of editorial jobs within a publishing house, but it is these people that will ultimately be helping you to develop your ideas and manuscript. Hey, I'm Simon. I'm the commissioning editor at a publishing house. I'm responsible for coming up with marketable ideas and matching them to good authors, like you. Hi, I'm Sally, the structural editor. I will help you to develop and edit your plot, themes and point of view, basically everything. I might also help you book doctor and then line edit all your work. I will aid you in assessing the content, style and language of your book and ultimately make sure that your manuscript matches what your novel is and its content. So we'll correct all those pesky paragraphs in any repetition. Hey, I'm Steve, the copy editor. I will ensure that the text matches industry standards and correct any other mistakes and just make sure it all ultimately makes sense. Finally, I'm Sandra, the proofreader, and I received the book last to make extra sure the book is perfect. Now that the actual written side of your book is underway, the design team will be producing the best cover and physical book possible for your story. Please meet Adam. Hi, I'm Adam. I'll be given a clear brief by the editor at the outset, and so we'll know exactly what your book is about. A warning, you might not actually get to meet me yourself, and you won't have the last say on your cover, but don't worry, I know exactly what cover will sell your book. Now let's meet the marketing and PR colleagues. Please meet Lucy, the head of the marketing team. Hi, I'm Lucy. I will make sure that your book is promoted in the best way possible. I understand what the market wants and needs, and I know how to promote to your relevant audiences. Hey, I'm Luke, the PR manager, and I work closely with Lucy. I will help you with all and any publicity that will help promote your book. And hi, I'm Linda, and I'm part of the Consumer Insight team. This is a department at most major publishers these days, and I will be able to provide the marketing and PR teams with lots of information and knowledge about the kinds of consumers likely to buy your books. This, in turn, will help to sell your book. Next, please meet Nigel and Rachel. Hi, I'm Nigel, head of the sales department. My team will be convincing all the relevant retailers to stock your books. This can include independent bookshops, bigger bookshops like Waterstones, supermarkets like Tesco and Asda, and online retailers like Amazon. And I'm Rachel, head of the rights team. If you sold rights to the publisher like foreign rights, translation rights, or even TV film rights, I'm in charge of selling them on for you. And now, finally, two important faces that generally work outside of the publishing house. Hi, I'm Zach from the printing company. Most publishers don't own their own, so I'll print your book for the publisher. 
and I'm Alice, the bookseller. I am the final face at the shops, and I'll be doing all I can to help sell your book and many others. Phew, a lot of faces to remember. But now you have a better idea of just who is helping you with your book and what they all do. As you can see, there are a lot of people working on your book, making sure it grows into the best it can be. Now, you're probably still wondering what exactly is in my contract and what specifically is a contract in publishing. Here are four important things to know about what makes up a contract. There is an offer within the contract, followed by acceptance, then some time for consideration, and finally, this is confirmed with intention to enter into legal relation. So, whilst every contract will be different, Within a publishing contract, there are some important areas to identify. A few key points you might expect from a typical contract are that a publisher must be very specific about which rights they want to license from you. For instance, whether they are just domestic rights or if they include world rights also. The publisher must be aware of the author's moral rights, including paternity rights. An author must vow that their work's their own and the author must confirm that they have permission to pass on any confidential details the book may include. There should be a clear schedule of when the book is due, and that the author must keep the publisher informed on their progress. The contract must set out the anticipated timetable for publication. There will be a confirmation that copyright remains with the estate for 70 years. The author must accept that the publisher will have the final say on all marketing, promotion and cover design. However, the author may request that they be consulted about design choices. This clause may also include the author's agreement to present a promotional event, acceptance that the publisher is bound to protect the author's copyright, and finally, there will be an outline of exactly what the author's royalties and advance will be and when they will be paid. And now you may ask, what exactly is the royalty breakdown? An author usually receives an advance on royalties once the contract is signed. And after your royalties have been earned back in this advance, you will receive regular payments. The contract will outline exactly how much this will be, but usually it is 10% of the publisher's net sales revenue, whilst the bookseller receives 60% and the publisher 30%. It is also important to note that an author will receive royalties from the price the bookseller pays, not the RRP. Now, you still might have a few questions about what exactly are moral rights and what is copyright. So what are moral rights? Moral rights are granted to an author automatically. The Society of Authors identified the three main moral rights conferred by the Copyright Act in 1988. The right of paternity, which is the right of an author to be identified whenever a work is published, performed or broadcast. In other words, authors, scriptwriters, illustrators and translators must be properly credited. The right of integrity, is the right of an author to object to a derogatory treatment of a work. The right of false attribution. This is the right not to have a work falsely attributed to you as an author. Copyright is a form of intellectual property right. We are now going to play a game of fact or fiction. Work must be registered to be protected by copyright. Fiction. Copyright is actually automatic. Copyright protects ideas. Fiction. Copyright does not protect ideas or mere facts, but copyright does protect the way in which ideas are expressed. Copyright covers any original work. Fact. In most cases, originality is the only condition that a work must meet to be protected by copyright. You will always own the copyright to your work. Fiction. The copyright of a specific work is usually owned by the person who created that work. For instance, if you are commissioned, the person or company who commissioned you may own the content. Copyright laws are the same in all countries. Fiction. Specific rights given to authors through copyright depend on national laws, but many governments have signed international agreements that reduce the differences in their copyright laws. Copyright is perpetual and it lasts forever. Fiction. In the USA, UK and EU, copyright protection usually lasts 70 years and economic rights are passed on to the author's heirs. You can legally copy 10% of a work without it being infringement. Fiction. Any unauthorised use of copyright work can potentially lead to legal action, 
to always seek permission before you use the work of others. Everything on the internet is public domain and free to use. Fiction. A work will fall into the public domain once copyright expires. There are some exceptions to copyright. Fact. The Copyright, Designs and Patents Act does provide for some exceptions to exclusive rights. For instance, for copying a work for non-commercial research, criticism, reviews, news reports, and so on. Copyright can be transferred. Fact. Those who buy the economic rights of authors are also called right holders. However, moral rights are independent of economic rights and always remain with the author, even when the economic rights are sold. Now, moving on from all these technicalities, Another question you probably have is, ah, how do I do marketing? And what kind of support will I receive? The answer is, don't worry. As explained above, there should be a whole marketing team that will help you. But how can I help them, you ask? Firstly, use social media. Social media is key for publishing today, allowing the publisher and you, the author, to really engage with the people that will be buying your book. So promote your book on all your social media channels and engage your followers to generate interest in your new book. You are the author, and ultimately, the more you create interest around your book, the more beneficial it will be for you. If you are unfamiliar with this, don't worry, the marketing team will help you. Secondly, please attend events. By going to these events, most likely organized by your publisher, you will be engaging with potential buyers of your book and encouraging them to buy it. Thirdly, Think about any good contacts you might have. For instance, if you have any contacts that you think might be useful to the marketing of your book, let the marketing team know, as this will be invaluable to them. Finally, just always ask the team what you can do. They will be doing the best they can, but help from the author themselves is always going to be beneficial to the marketing campaign. Gosh, you may think, why don't I just self-publish? That will surely be simpler. Now. Of course, self-publishing will work for certain projects, such as if you want to create only a few copies of a personal book for your family. But in general, there are also other advantages. For instance, you won't be rejected. You can publish something that might not traditionally be deemed as commercially viable. You have total control of all aspects of your book. You receive a greater percentage of the book sales. You have no commitments or contracts to anyone except yourself, so you can set the due date. However, there are some very major disadvantages. You are likely to have to invest your own money to publish your book and risk losing it if your book fails. A publisher would cover all the printing and design costs for your book, which otherwise will cost you a lot of money. And you will probably have to pay for more services when preparing your book for publication, such as cover design, copy editing, and proofreading. If you're a bit disorganized, you might find it difficult to stick to a deadline that you've given yourself. You may struggle to have the contacts or expertise to market the book effectively. Without the sales team, you are likely to find it a big challenge to get your book into retailers. They are notoriously difficult to deal with. A publishing house will give you a certain amount of backing, prestige and authority behind your book, which many readers notice. Finally, publishing takes quite a lot of time. As you can see, generally has a whole army behind one book. You, as a sole author, may struggle to find the time and energy for all of this. And you may also want to focus on writing other books and achieving personal projects. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. I hope that all previous queries have been answered and that the mysteries of the publishing industry have been revealed to you. Please contact us if you have any further questions. Goodbye for now.